you're looking at a beautiful piece of Spanish olive wood. I see an image in the face of this wood. Be sure to watch all the way to the end and I will reveal what I see. And let me know if you see the same thing. This is going to be a real treat. It's a piece of olive wood. This was sent to me by Hugh from Wouldn't It Be Nice. I'll put a link to his channel in the description. Hugh lives in the UK and he sent this piece of wood to me. And I live in Oregon, so it was quite a trip. It's got some beautiful grain in it. I got it in January and it's taken me this long to come up with what I think is going to work for it. I sure hope so. You can see beautiful grain here. Not so much in there. But when you look at how it's in there, I think this needs to be the top and I'm going to turn it down and hope to find that grain down in there. You just never know with a piece of wood. So I'm going to get a hole here for a worm screw. We'll get it mounted and start turning it. So the other way to get as much grain out of here as I can is to make a square bowl. So that's what we're going to do. I have a freshly sharpened half inch swept back bowl gouge and I have my face shield on and we are going to start cutting. No tail stock support. It's really on that uh, worm screw very good. I'm going to come from the other direction and see if maybe that'll even do better. Okay, that's even better. So that's what we'll do on the wings. I'm going to cut a little bit more out of the bowl area here and then work on the wings. So I have you on a different angle here and I've put a pencil mark there. I'm thinking I want some drooping wings on this. So I'm going to cut from this way for a little while to try to take care of the wings and then we'll go back and shape the underside. I'm doing about 900 RPMs. Okay, I'm going to resharpen this one. It's cutting nice, but it could cut better. Okay, freshly sharpened, and we're getting close to a shape. Now we're starting to cut it up. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut my recess. And this outside line should be just right. Here's my parting tool to get it going. Now I have a homemade dovetail cutting tool. sand and I'm going to start with 80 grit around 400 rpms and we'll work our way up to 400 and then we'll get it flipped around. So that's definitely going to be easy. This not so much. It's uh, pretty smooth, so I'll probably just go over it by hand. It's gonna be fun. We'll get it flipped around and make a bowl in it. Okay, we're all sanded to 400, and I'm debating between either using shellac or wipe-on poly. I'll be able to reach both sides once it's reversed. So that's what I'm gonna do, and it'll give me a little bit of time to think about what to use. I've been asked a number of times if I could just show reversing the bowl and I know it's probably important and I just get used to grabbing it and doing it but what I had here to keep from drilling too deep of a hole is I just took a piece of quarter inch plywood cut a hole in it and used it for a spacer so now it's a matter of putting it in back in and it'll be on a recess so we're just going to put the bowl over here hold it in place and we should be good to go now, normally I like to run the tailstock against it and get some pressure but let's see how this is running and we'll decide well the bowl is is running really good so I don't think we need to do anything. So now I'll get things straightened back up and start cutting it. Alright, we're all set. It is running really good. At 760 RPMs. I'm just going to flatten that top off now. Make sure that's not wanting to chip on me. So now I will take, you can't see what I'm doing there, but I'm just going to make a parallel line to shoot for. Set up to a thousand RPMs. Okay, now we need to mark for a bowl. I know where the outside is because it's almost right there. I'm going to start out big. When I said big, <laughs> a big wall thickness, not a big bowl. Wow. 
Well, let's do it. And I hope the plan was right that I get into that spectacular grain. It opened up here once I cleaned it up. All right, half inch sweat back. I'm still going about 970. Okay, I'm going to go another half an inch down with my 3-8 sweat back, and then we'll check the depth. Okay, I think it's time to sand. Okay, this is going to be easy for a couple of reasons. It's small and this wood cuts and sands excellent. I'm going to start with the 80 grit again and we're going to just take care of these wings like this. as smooth as can be. Inside we'll do it under power. I'm going to go forward at 450 RPM. Probably sand that little rim. Like that. So, it's going to be real easy. Let me get it sanded up to 400 and I'll surprise you with what finish we're going to put on it. Alright, it's time to decide which finish to use and I think I probably knew all along I'm going to use shellac. But first I'll use the shellac based sanding sealer. Now it's not fair because I wiped the bowl down with denatured alcohol and it brought the colors out. So we got cheated. But it's still really beautiful. Pretty sure if I went the other direction we would have lost most of all this beautiful grain. Okay, I'll get a couple coats on it, soaking it up pretty good, so maybe three coats and a couple coats of shellac. I now have two coats of sanding sealer, two coats of shellac. Between each coat I use the fine scotch bright. When I visited Phil a while back, he showed me a cool trick and he gave me some of this white scotch bright. It sticks to your sanding pad. And this really works good in these areas here where you really can't do it by hand while it's spinning. But it also works good everywhere. So let's try it. And we go about 550 RPM. looks nice. First time I've used the white and I like it a lot. Now, I might be able to do this while it's spinning, but I think
just doing it like that works quite well. And then on the flat edges here, there, another trick to put in the bag. So I'll get that all finished up. We don't have a tenon to take off. So when I'm done with that, I'll show you what we have. There it is. One beautiful piece of Spanish olive wood. And boy, do I love this piece of wood. I put a little curve on the wing, dropping it down. I think that really adds a lot to it. It's still 6 and an eighth inch square because I didn't take anything off there. And it's still about 2 inches tall. I finished it with two coats of sanding sealer and two coats of shellac using scotch Bright in between each coat. And then my final scotch Bright was the extra fine, the white stuff. And it's what Phil showed me one time. And it really works good. So when I was editing this video, I saw a cougar looking at the deer on my sweatshirt. And that gave me the chills. Well, I've turned that away, so maybe he's not here anymore. But I'm going to put a picture of that again at the end, and maybe I'll find a picture of a cougar and put it up there and compare the two. Let me know if you think it looks like a cougar, or what you think it looks like. Many thanks to Hugh for sending me this wonderful piece of wood. I'm going to put a link in my description of his channel, so check him out. He does great work. I hope you enjoyed this video. So I see a cougar in the face of that piece of wood, or at least a big cat. Let me know what you see. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment, I read them all. Hit the notification bell so you'll know when I have a new one out. It would also be great if you could share my videos around. Thanks to all of you who are subscribed to my channel. It means a lot to me. If you're not subscribed, consider doing so. I do many types of turnings, from segmented work to natural turnings from pieces of trees, and I put out videos weekly. Thanks again. Until the next time, see you later.